the message that I received uh, earlier today, as I always do in bringing a summation of what I'm going to speak of, the Essenes brought forth, greetings, we are the collective voice of the Essenes. We come to speak about the conflict in our homeland of Israel. Tonight we wish to ask each of you to become bringers of the light to our homeland and to the surrounding regions. As more and more light floods our planet, more and more darkness continues to purge as well. Tonight we will lead a meditation to clear the dark energy permeating our homeland. Since the time we left Israel over 2,000 years ago and the Essene family began to disperse in other countries and other regions, our energy still remains there in Israel as strong as ever. Tonight we are bringers of light and will collectively remember our power and flood our homeland with more light, love, and peace. We have the power to make a difference in the vibrational frequency of our homeland to return to peace. It is an awesome task to carry light. Shall we begin? And this information, before I start the channel, the message is from Barbara Marciniak, Bringers of the Dawn, teaching from the Palladians. Chapter 12, it's an awesome task to carry light. The family, is li- the family of light has been noted as a family of information. Light is information. So the family of light is the family of information. There are consciousnesses families of war that spend millions or billions of years in their conception of time studying, promoting, and experiencing control over consciousness. In a universe that exists outside the limitation of time, all scenarios within a free will zone get played out. This is a time for you to radically change your views about yourselves and to break down boundaries. It's time for you to rise out of the pettiness of day-to-day dramas and events and begin to connect on a cosmic level with your higher plan that is occurring. The story of the family of light is who you are. You have committed to do a certain task, to be on assignment, and to remember and fulfill what you came here to do. We have told you that your world and your identity within them are going to change drastically, and you're coming closer to those timelines. You've had many changes, many of you, But if you look back to see who you were one year ago, ideally, each of you will see that you're truly now much more empowered. Reach out with your feeling center and feel the confusion that is spreading around the world about what is going on. This planet has operated on a very low frequency, a frequency based on survival and a frequency based on disempowerment. Feel the fear and uncertainty running through the lives of humans as they begin to realize that that they're that, excuse me, to realize that the way their lives have been defined is now crumbling. Realize that light is the culprit of this crumbling and that you as members of the family of light and keepers of frequency are causing this crumbling to take place because you carry the electrical magnetic charge onto this planet that broadcasts the new frequency. You help create this chaos of new consciousness. Think about over your own lives for the last year or two and realize there have been times when you yourselves have been in an incredible chaos of consciousness. You've been in a chaos of decisions about who you are, where you want to live, who you want to mate with, whether you want to stay mated, or whether you want to have a child, whether you want to continue to be a parent, and many other things that have created chaos in your life. Reach your minds out into your communities and feel how the foundation that people have based their lives on is slowly slipping away to rubble. The global grasp of reality is going, going, gone. The foundation is sliding away, and there are those who cannot see the slide at this time. The most significant reason for this slide is that there is a new information accessible that makes the old information archaic and decrepit. And this information that we speak of really talks about Sarah's holy grail codes and the new energies and the new light codes that I brought forth in my book with Sarah. And so this book was written in 1992 and now we're in 2023. But she's, what 
as I read this, I I know that this corresponds to the new light codes that Sarah is bringing in. The most significant reason, as I said, for this slide is that there's new information, but also I feel, as I said, there's new light codes that are responsible for the crumbling. So you're all responsible to a certain extent for evolving yourselves through this and for being your own forms of inspiration, for being living examples for others. You take a very active role. There are many who say, oh no, here comes the light, because light is known to alter every vibrational frequency that it encounters. Light carries information, and information expands systems so that old systems can no longer exist. So if light moves to destroy, it also births new systems by what it leaves behind. A new order is formed. That is the new earth. Some of you find it difficult to think of yourselves as destroyers because you have a brief, excuse me, you have a belief system about destruction. It is a paradigm. And if you get stuck in that vibration and do not smash those ideas, you will become very confined and restricted in experiencing reality. You are definitely destroyers. You destroy systems where the dark team and ignorance prevail. Light goes in to destroy all systems, and the experience of destruction is relative to how strong or with what fervor consciousness clings to what is being destroyed. Discover what you are in your physical body because it is your outreach power here. Learn to direct and use it and become one with it. By carrying light inside of your body, you bring that frequency onto the planet, and that frequency has information. The frequency of light contains the history of your identity and history of your particular consciousness. Light represents all that you are and all that you shall ever be. As you simply evolve yourself and let your own personal life evolve, you truly become your true authentic self. You send your telepathic broadcast out that your presence is here, much as we always say to you, we are here. We are also members of the family of light as the Pleiadian Council of Life, and we bring information with us as well. It is an awesome task to carry light. It is an awesome task to embody light. It is an awesome task to be light. Once you allow light to come into your body, you begin the process of change, which is not always joyous, uplifting, and fun-filled, as some of you have discovered. In this process, when things are not so fun, Phil, the first thing you may do to keep yourself from evolving and changing is to respond to emotional events with fear. You may blame someone else and whine and complain, and you may feel and believe that someone did, did something to you. The rest of the planet believes this, but they are not members of the family of light. There are millions of members of the family of light, and the light is returning to this planet where the dark has been in charge for a long time. The dark forces have fed off your emotions of fear and negativity and war and greed. Prime creator is the energy of all things and allows all things. In a short period of time, there will be a great need to realize which people are really keepers of frequency and which are just talking about it. The keepers of frequency are going to be called upon to create a certain stability upon this planet, but they know 100% of the time that they create their reality. They learn how to defy the laws of humanity by conscious direction of their awareness and energy. That is the depth of impeccable and commitment we are speaking of. The way you can best operate at this time is to be keepers of your own frequency and do not go around saving everyone else. Do everything in your power to keep yourself consistently aware and understanding of what is going on. Be consistent with the frequency of light that brings you information and with the frequency of love which is the frequency of creation. Earth's grid rock will change. In actuality, Earth is going through an initiation. Earth cares about all of its inhabitants and is evolving as its inhabitants are evolving into an existence in which greater possibilities will be everyday occurrences, in which miracles can become the way of life because they will exist within the frequency that will become available. Each of you assist in making that frequency alive on this planet by living your life according to light and according to know and to what you know. This is work of an individual nature. You may work in groups and have certain leaders, but you must as individuals evolve yourselves. As you do so, and as you are led by your light to live a certain way, 
you will begin to feel excited. You do not have to work with us or with anyone, anyone else to gather information. The only continuity needed is for you to continually work with yourself and seek the meaning of what we call your authentic self. Feel what the authentic self means. It is triumphant, liberated, joyous in achievement and the highest in attainment. The planet is in desperate need of committed entities who are in search of their true authentic self. You all understand vibration in terms of light and sound. Vibrations are ongoing. They carry and transmit forms of intelligence. When you look to yourself and do not forget that you're on this path and you continuously remind yourself that you are pulling light into your body and are seeking to raise the frequency of your physical being, defy the laws of humanity, and alter the frequency of the planet, you're producing a kind of continuity that can do more than all the books and tapes in the world. There's nothing stronger than your commitment to, the, to your authentic self. Once you commit yourself to the energy of light, the energy of excitement and uplifted frequency are truly yours to receive. Then you must live according to what these energies put before you as you call for your task to be accelerated. First and foremost, live your light, embody your light, and be the light. Live that light inside of yourself with courage. Don't live in the closet. Live it. Speak what you know without getting up on a soapbox and waving your hands around like a fanatic. Simply state, this is what I believe. This is what I live. For example, someone may say to you, careful, you might catch a cold. You can say in return, I don't believe in catching cold. I don't use my body for sickness. By saying this, like this, you bring others to awakening. Speak what you know in casual conversation with family and friends. Whenever you are, use the pillar of light. We recommend that each of you visualize the pillar of light coming in to the top of your head, opening your crown, and filling your body with light. Picture this cosmic pillar of light coming from the higher cosmos, filling you, and then coming out your solar plexus and making a ball of light around your body so that you can exist within a glowing etheric egg. When you love yourself and Earth, and you know that you are here to redefine, redesign, and break the boundaries of humanity, you broadcast this. You live your life committed to this. If you ask how much time you need to devote to this, you will say it is very simple, all your time, all of it. It's not something you worry about. It's not something that you have to think about. It's simply something that you are. You live it. It is your divinity. You'll find that when you live your life, You'll draw to yourself others who are very interested in living their lives in the same manner, and your members will grow and grow. When you make the commitment to say, Spirit, I'm wishing to be employed by you. Put me to work and show me what I can do. Give me the opportunity to live my life, to speak my truth, and to carry this light around the globe. Then Spirit will put you to work. Be clear in what you're available for and to make a contract with Spirit. Tell Spirit what you want for compensation. Spirit will allow you to negotiate and write whatever contract you want as long as you are operating in the capacity of service to yourself to uplift your vibration. When you are in service to yourself and are committed to personally evolving and changing, you uplift everyone around you. That is service. Service is not going out and martyring yourself and saying, I'm, not, I'm going to save you. Service is doing the work yourself and living in such a way that everyone you touch is affected by your journey. Everyone is chosen. What does it mean to be called the chosen? Those who gather when we speak and those who fear the sound of the internal song are the chosen. Just because you are the chosen does not mean you are automatically going to rise in the ranks and perform the duty that needs to be performed. Who chose you? You chose yourself. You're not members of an ex exclusive club, but yet you are. The membership in this club is voluntary and all of you decided who you would be and why you would come here. We cannot emphasize enough that courage is going to become the middle name for each and every one of you. Many of, many of you have lived your lives in the closet. You are not willing to let everyone know what your intimate beliefs are. You may feel very safe in a room discussing a variety of subjects, some of them very far out, yet in your workplace or with your family or friends, you put a zipper across your mouth and will not give yourself permission to speak your truth. There are a multitude of people whose codings 
are waiting to hear your voice. So you, the chosen, are being called at this time. You're being called out for your courage. If you cannot gather courage now, we are not too certain that you're not going to be able to gather courage later. You each came to this planet to do a task, and that task is at hand. It is now. It is to be the light. The decade of change is upon you, and as you integrate and realize what this change means, it will alter each and every one of your lives. The change means giving up many things, coming apart from many things, and coming together with other things because you will trust. Trust is a word that all of you would love to have as your middle name, and yet trust is something that you all say you don't have. What does it mean to trust? It means to have such inner knowing that your thoughts create your world, to simply be quite certain with divine nonchalance and inner knowing that if you think something, it is. It is this theme over and over again that we are attempting to present to you in every capacity and every means of expression so that one of these days you will get it. You will get it and begin to live it. You'll begin to change your lives. We keep emphasizing that the time to keep moving is now. It is not necessary that you have run out. It is not necessarily that you have run out of time. It is that time is beginning to squeeze itself upon you. If you do not act, things can move into discomfort. As we have said, you are chosen. You are the chosen one. You have chosen yourself. If you do not move into the work of the blueprint you have designed for yourself, to a certain extent, you will run out of time. You have a few more years before things will be so topsy-turvy and hectic, but if you're not living your life in the true element of life you have volunteered to be, it could be too late. In other words, if you procrastinate and procrastinate, you will, be, you will have wasted time, and perhaps you will not be able to accomplish what you came to do. No matter what the endeavor in which you are being led to participate, it is a part of your blueprint and plan so you can evolve, and by evolving, you affect the evolution of the planet. Everything you do is for your evolution. As you come into comprehension of who humans are and what this place is, you begin to open new pathways for others. You'll find that events that you never imagined will somehow be put together, be put before you. There will be things that are beyond your comprehension, setups, as we like to call them, or opportunities you never thought of. This is when you will know that you are living your light and doing so with courage. This, there's a good possibility that light carriers will come in question in the next few years. Understand that this is a part of the plan. All of you must have a clear intention as to how you would like your reality to be designed. This does not mean that you are not flexible. It means that you operate with clarity. To, my, to, to say to my guides and to all those who are assisting me in my evolutionary journey on Earth, it is my intention I be successful. It is my intention that I always am safe in all things that I do. It is my intention that I receive love and give love in all things that I do. It is my intention that I have a good time and that I be provided with prosperity according to my needs. It is my intention that I not become overly enamored in the material world. Though you must do your own work to evolve, there are many off-planetary and non-physical beings ready to work with you. All you need to do is call them for assistance. When you do, always state clearly that any assistance come to you from the light. Stay in your integrity and be aware. Be aware of this and be clear about the assistance you call to you. The idea now is to carry the light frequency with so much potency that you now become the energy of light and love. This will allow you to feel a part of creation and to nudge not that which is not of the light, but it will allow you to teach you through love and light and allow your consciousness now to move forward into the true, authentic spirit essence that you truly are. And so, dearest children of the light, we are the collective voices of the Essenes. It's a very somber day as we come to you, but it's a day of great anticipation. As we ask you now to simply deepen your connection into your heart, to your true, authentic self, to the power of the light that you are, in which you were created, or remember, in light you were created, in light you shall remain. In love you were created, and in love you shall remain. 
Tonight we ask you to begin to embody the energy of light and love so powerfully, so potently, so exponentially within your own energetic field and within your own physicality, within your own etheric blueprint, and into all aspects of your being. And you begin to feel the purity of light within your own soul and begin to feel the presence of the power of the light that you carry to be able to change the world. Be in this world, but not of it. Be the change you wish to see. Be the light keepers and the light bearers and the bringers of the dawn of the new earth that is emerging upon this planet. As you see what is happening within our homeland, you can see now that the purging of the darkness has created great chaos and dissension. It is indeed extremely sad and unfortunate that so many souls are in the way of this purging or in the way of this clearing. But no, dear children of the light, that as you understand that as more light is flooding this planet, more darkness will rear its head. It is the nature of the law of physics. And so as you see the purging of the energy as this planet and all beings continue to rise in consciousness, the lower vibrational frequencies of hatred, war, violence, and greed will continue to rear its ugly head. We are not saying that we accept this, but we say that this is the law of physics. This is the law of the spiritual principles. That the energy of light will and shall remain to be a more potent factor and a more potent presence than darkness. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Hold the light within you collectively with us as a part of your seen family of light and we will all band together and hold the light for a homeland of Israel and for all the inhabitants that are in harm's way. Indeed, this is a very dire situation. And the resolution that is to be brought forth is simply peace. Is when there is peace within the hearts of all souls can peace return to this planet. But in this moment of time, we, the collective voices of these teams, along with you as a part of the family of light, the keepers of the light, the bringers of the dawn, are the ground troops and the bearers of light that hold vigil until others can hold their own light. You are holding vigil like a candle to show others the light, to show them the way, the light, and the truth. Just as we did 2,000 years ago during our lifetime with Yeshua. When there was great darkness and we were misunderstood, we were, we were persecuted and we were forced to leave our homeland. But we etched our light into the earth, into that land. We etched the energy of peace into that land, into the earth, into the very vibrational frequency of all life forms into the earth, into the water, into the air, and yes, even into the fire. As we come upon this eve, and we ask you to come stand with us as if we are in the pinnacle of the Star of David, and we are standing in our respective places and positions as we have done before to anchor our light into the earth, into our homeland, etching and embodying our vibrational frequencies 
into the earth and into the country of Israel, our homeland. Tonight as you stand tall and proud, may begin to feel the remembrance of when it was time for you and all of us to leave for our own safety. We had vowed that we would return again, be reawakened and re-remember, and be the light and holding the light more exponentially, more potently, more powerfully within our own energetic frequency in another time, in another reality, to continue to clear the darkness. And so now, over 2,000 years later, we are doing the same. We are asking you to do the same. We are all here, holding and etching the energy of peace, love, light, and truth. And the remembrance of our divine light that we can be the change we wish to see. Tonight, energetically, with all of your permissions, we are coming together as one force field of light, infusing the power of our light like a laser light into the region of our homeland, illuminating the hearts of those who are in need of light, love, and healing. Helping others to create a force field around them so strong, so vibrantly, and yet so pure that nothing or no one can permeate the light that is held within their essence. We are infusing light into all beings in our homeland and in the surrounding region. That our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow ancestors, that all step forward with faith and with courage and with the power of love and peace etched within their being. That this is the calling card that will change the world. This is the energy that will bring peace to all souls. And you say, how can this be? And we say, we believe, we trust, we know. That the light of God is powerful, more powerful than the darkness. And yet this is a planet of duality is a planet of free will. We know and trust that the light of God surrounds us and the power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us and wherever we are, God is and all is well. Despite all that is happening, all is well. The light continues to purge the darkness. And there will be a time when the purging is no longer needed and there will only be light and love in the hearts of all souls and upon this planet. Until that time, we ask you to continue to be the bringers of the dawn, the bearers of light, the keepers of the frequency, as your light, as you carry it, is indeed most powerful. Remember that the light is the culprit that is causing this crumbling as the members of the family of light and the keepers of frequency are causing the crumbling to take place because your electrical magnetic frequency has increased and the energy of the planet's frequency has increased and you're helping to create a new earth by helping to clear the darkness 
the pain and the suffering. It may seem counterproductive or counterintuitive, but it is a truth. So we ask you to continue now to breathe in the frequency of light and embody it into your essence so that your frequency, your vibration is a powerful frequency and a powerful calling card for change. Your light, your love can change the world. Your vibration can affect another. Each one, teach one, each one, lead one. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And regardless of what you believe yourself to be, you are part of the seen family of light. And we are the collective force field that continues to work with clearing the energy upon this planet as it continues to clear you so you can embody more light, be more light, live more light, hold more light, and create more light. You are master creators. You are bringers of the light. You are the keepers of the frequency. And this energy is encoded within your very DNA. That you are keepers of the frequency of the light that is encoded within your DNA. It's your time that you lived in the lifetime of Christ as all of you here on this call have. Within your very DNA, was encoded the remembrance of the light that you hold and carry. The peace is embedded within your DNA of the peace that you hold and carry. Love is embedded within your DNA, the love that you hold and carry. Peace, love, and love. These are true vibrational frequencies. They're not pleasantries. They are not superficial statements. They are indeed encoded frequencies that are encoded inside of your being. Peace, love, and light. They are encodings, and you are the keepers of these frequencies, keepers of love, light, and peace. They are encoded within your being. And tonight, we, re- we refresh your memory that you have the power to hold and carry this frequency. And even if you are not aware of what you are doing, how you are affecting another, and how you can assist in helping to bring light, more light onto this planet to conquer the darkness and to be an assistance or an aid here on this planet. Know that you are already doing it by your mere presence, by who you are, because you are the chosen one. You have chosen yourselves to be the keepers of the light. You have chosen to embody peace, love, and light. You have chosen to awaken at a certain time in your earthly incarnation till we remember again peace, love, and light. And this is your signature calling card. This is the vibration that you carry. This energy can never be destroyed. It certainly, as they say, can be altered if you so choose to not allow yourself to fully embody this, but it can never be destroyed. 
and as we etch that energy within our homeland 2,000 years ago, that energy in Israel can never be destroyed, the light, the love, and the peace, despite all that is happening. She shall prevail in our homeland. Peace shall prevail in the homeland of our beloved messenger and Prince of Peace, beloved Jeshua. And so tonight as you enter into this powerful state of grace, know that truly the love of God surrounds you, the power of God protects you, the presence of God watches over you wherever you are, God is and all is well. Feel the power, feel the power, feel the power. Feel the power of the light that you carry as a wisdom keeper, as a keeper of the frequency of these powerful embedded codes of light, love, and peace. Be still, be still, be still, and know that you are loved. Be still, be still, be still, and know that you are light. Be still, be still, be still, and know that you are peace. That you are the change you wish to see. You are truly the change you wish to see. Be at peace, be at peace, be at peace. You are the change you wish to see. And so as dear Sarah's light code step forward, and as her beautiful Holy Grail code continue to be infused within you, if you so desire, then allow the frequency of her new light codes and the new earth codes to be held within your etheric blueprint because you are creating the new earth and the new world through your thoughts, through your life, through your presence, through your love, through your harmonious nature. And to recall forth these powerful words from Judy Satori's book, Sunshine Before the Dawn. The key words will allow us to manifest and create miasmia. This word, when said, instills opening and joy. It's like cutting a new pathway of intention. Command to set clear intention. Metaphorically, it's like Moses parting the Red Sea. Miasmia. We call forth the energy of peace. Miasmia. Yanonia, when this would have said before, it activates the stream of the intention that pushes all of his path and helps bring forth the intent or desire into the manifested world of form. Yanonia, peace. We pray for peace. We call for peace. Yanonia. Yasente, when this would have said, is a part of the Trinity. Miasmia, Yanonia, Yasente, it activates the perfect outcome. Yasente is a word that would said can project present thought into the future for manifestation. The creation of this future manifestation is the present. We call forth the manifestation of pre- peace onto the earth plane, into all forms, into all life forms, into the home of Israel, into the home of all countries, all nations, all leaders, all souls, all set in the team. Yasente, we call forth this manifestation of peace. And so as we imagine this, we know that it is a truth that we are powerful beings of light, keepers of the light, bearers of the light, and that we are here to create, and we are here to remember that we are the bringers of the dawn of this new earth. We are the keepers of the flames of light. Myasmia, Yanonia, Gelsente. Myasmia, Yanonia, Gelsente. Myasmia, Yanonia, Gelsente. We are the peacekeepers. We are the light bearers. We are the keepers of the codes of love, light, and peace. And this we are, as we are the Essene family of light. And we call this forth now. We claim it, we manifest it, and so it is. And this completes our transmission.
That was very powerful, and I feel like crying. I don't know if anybody mm-hmm. else does, but I feel like crying. Very powerful. Yes, ma'am. I wear a noise-canceling headphones, Lee, so I can hear you better. And two or three times it disrupted me, and I opened my eyes to hear the windows cracking from all of the energy. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, I didn't really, uh, I thought, you know, what is going to be said tonight because it's really important. And, um, you know, I always have a lot of, I shouldn't say always, but uh, I tend to be one who um, has a little bit of perfectionism in me and I always want to, you know, make sure that I do do it right. This is better than what I thought I could ever do. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> I was like, wow. I mean, this was powerful. Yes, it was. So that's why you probably got into that book, Lillian. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I haven't looked in that book for a long, long, long time. It's a really old book. And uh, I kept hearing the book, go get the book. And then, of course, as they always do, they show me the right thing that I'm supposed to share. Yeah, I was trying okay. to remember if if I you had said anything to me about it, and you know, that that's what would make me think of it. But I didn't think you had. And so, yeah. That's no, because I haven't talked about this book for a while. Yeah. That I know about. So, Lee, in the last couple days, the book that you referred me to, many were called Fewer Chosen. I've been told, reach out and ask what the next book is. Find out what the next book is from Lee. Well, I I just found it out tonight. That was so moving, that particular chapter. It talked about your life being, I don't know, turned around is the word that I would use in the last year or two. So just Mm -hmm. to share with the group, I was married. I got divorced. And then as, a, as an intention, got back with the man that I married and divorced. So it, it has been a full, a full circle, and a lot has gone on in the last two years. I have no idea how that chapter meets my life where I am today, right today, when it was written in 1990-something. Yeah, this this book is uh, was written about the same time as uh, "May It Call You Are Chosen." These mm. are some of these old books. These are some. This is when I first started studying this stuff back in the '90s, in the early '90s. And uh, these older books are just as just. I mean, they're pertinent for now, and it's like we fast forward into now. For sure. Mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Lee, I, you know, we've done, we did the Mayasmia Yanonya Yasente together before, but when when we did it tonight, it was, it, I, it, it felt like there was. It felt like a dawn. It felt like when the sun mm-hmm. comes up and the shadows disappear. It was as if the sun came up and the shadows disappeared. So that was really, really, really great. Mm-hmm. I've always felt like we, yeah, I've always felt like you know we should be able to to help. In in a in a more substantial way than than well than I have in the past, and this really feels like a substantial way mm-hmm. to to bring that light to know that that is what what is actually happening is that light is actually 
here. And the knowing of that is kind of like a key. It allows it. Thank you, Link. You're welcome. Yeah, when I was saying those, it really felt like that it, it was, um, it did feel more powerful saying um, those keywords, mm-hmm. that it was really potent and it was like the power of that frequency was really um, um, Yep. My whole body was situation. covered with goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it was. It was like this is the, this is the, uh, after not it's not that's not even the right word affirmation. This is a proclamation of peace. You know, where mm. it was like mm. proclaiming that. Yeah. And I know it's difficult when there's all these crazy things happening in the world, or. Sometimes I think, well, this, some of this stuff that we do seems Pollyanna, but I know it's not. Uh, and so I really appreciate every one of you um, being on the call and pulling this vibration and, and understanding this at whatever level you're able to understand it because, you know, we, this is what we signed up to do. I just want to thank you for everybody being on the call tonight, hearing the call to, to be here. So, um, thank you so much. And thank, thank you, Lee, for too. telling us the message. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Does anybody else have anything they want to say before we go about our business? Well, our next, uh, the next teen class will be November 7th, and then my um, Sisterhood of the Rose class will be at Thursday, October 26th. So, uh, as always, Tiffany, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll just continue to hold our energies with our clean family of light and we're all working together for the greater cause. So I really thank you again. And everybody have a great evening. And thank you, Ms. Tiffany, for always being so good to help us. So we yes, appreciate it. Yeah. So. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, everybody. Have, we a, have. have a good night.